In today's interview, a topic which is surrounded with uncertainty. Brexit. At this point in time, many scenarios are possible. It's very complex, but industry has to be prepared and wants to be heard. Mayday. What are the scenarios and what can we expect? Something I will discuss with René van Sloten from Cefic and Mark and Nevin Jones from Keller and Heckman. René, what possible outcomes has the chemical industry considered so far? You have to assume the worst possible outcome, and that is a no-deal scenario. I'm sure that uh, big companies are able to, to model several scenarios, but in the end it comes down to the following three. A no-deal, the UK falls off the cliff on the 29th of March, 11 o'clock in the evening, or there is a, a deal and there is a transition period up to the end of uh, 2020 as it stands uh, today, or there is a deal then also for the future relationship afterwards that continues a close relationship between the UK and the EU. The most realistic preparation you can do is to prepare for a, a cliff edge situation on the 29th of, of, of March. Marcus, there are many scenarios uh, with a lot of legal consequences. What are your suggestions for UK-based lead resistance and um, their co resistance in the UK? In essence, you know, as, as we said, you, you must prefer for kind of the worst case scenario, particularly where there, is, where there are complex uh, supply chain issues. I think one of the core issues is ensuring that there is a kind of a, a non-traumatic and a smooth transition into, you know, exit day and into the new, you know, the new, new, the new world, if you like, that we walk into, which is, you know, the UK outside of the EU is to ensure that you have the data rights and you have, you, you have the ability to ensure compliance with both EU reach and whatever uh, UK legislation is in place after exit day. If you talk about data rights, I mean, um, you mentioned the consortium members, they might have global data rights, uh, but purchasers of a letter of access, they only purchased access to a dossier for EU reach purposes. The first question for consortia are, firstly, is the consortia open to um, uh, full members which are non-EU members? That's really always the first, uh, the starting point. And therefore, will UK companies be allowed to be full consortium members on exit day? After that, the question is, inside of the consortia, how is the data owned? Um, and that's normally been historically split up between, for example, existing studies um, and new studies, whereby existing studies are the studies that the founding members of the consortium have brought to the consortium. Uh, and the new studies are normally those studies that were conducted after a data gap analysis, which are normally, let's say, owned or at least managed by the consortium itself. And therefore, in the consortium, you need to understand how you will get access to both the existing studies and the new studies, both for EU reach, but also for UK reach, and that's just the questions inside of, of course, the consortia. UK importers cannot appoint an only representative or, for the matter, transfer their registration. What can they do? Well, because EU registrants can only be EU manufacturers, EU importers or an EU OR, and until there is an exit, of course, many of these downstream users at the moment inside of the EU27 will not be, for example, an EU importer and therefore won't per se be able to register. The ECHA has issued some guidance on that and stated that, you know, uh, Industry should at least be putting in place agreements with the so-called kind of suspensive conditional uh, provisions. Uh, but ECHA haven't gone as far as, as, as kind of allowing the submission of registration dossiers uh, to be kind of effective only on um, exit date, which could have been uh, one way of ensuring a smoother transition. Rene, major supply chain uh, disruption and custom challenges might happen. Um, what are your key concerns regarding a no-deal Brexit? The first thing is tariffs. That would be a horror scenario. I think uh, even bigger than the tariffs is the customs. Just 10, 15 minutes more formalities at, at the border will result in huge, let's say, queues at the, at, at the border. What happens with the, the trade agreements that we have in place for the, for the moment? I mean, they will, of course, become void after the transitional phase. Um, rules of origin will kick in. Then, of course, on, on the front of regulation, yeah, what with, with reach, uh, what with uh, climate uh, regulation, or what about uh, the future of the emission trading system. Look also at uh, chemical maintenance crews that are travelling across Europe to do maintenance on plants. 
One of my questions, uh, Marcus, is enforcement and Brexit. Uh, I mean, you have a potential statement of non-compliance. They are addressed to the British authority. What will happen to them? Certainly in the white paper that was released from the UK government on the future relationship between the UK and the EU, um, the view from the UK government is that in the future, the UK will have an associate membership of ECHA um, and there will be close cooperation between the UK and the EU. In practical terms, what looks likely, if there is that agreement, is that UK companies will not simply be able to ignore decisions from ECHA or from, for example, the European Commission or others. Um, and it could be that because the UK in, uh, uh, benefits from a very unique relationship in having a kind of an associate membership of ECHA, that they will be all the more inclined to make sure that an ECHA decision or a Commission decision is acted upon. So what can we potentially expect from UK reach? First point to say is that there may not be a UK reach. As Sethic are advocating for, as the House of Lords in their report, as I mentioned last uh, week that was published, have stated, interestingly, the UK Parliament, um, when the bill on uh, trade came before the UK Parliament, they voted to change the bill so that the UK remained part of the medicinal, uh, the EU medicinal products um, legislation. All we have at the moment is um, the kind of the outline of a UK reach as reflected in the white paper on the future relationship between the UK and the EU. What the, some of the interesting points there is that the UK are envisaging the reach registrations which have been done by UK companies will be grandfathered into the UK REACH regime. But there isn't, per se at the moment, um, a view that EU REACH, regu reach registrations, which have been done by EU27 companies, will be grandfathered in in the same way. One of the red lines is that the UK will not be sub subject to the CJEU decisions, how those two procedures will mesh, and how, for example, this, you know, uh, uh, this common rule book will be implemented when there is a difference or a divergence between, for example, a UK position and an EU position, and how that will be you know, um, resolved by way of the arbitration panel, the joint committee, um, in practice. Okay, and René, what is the preferred outcome uh, regarding uh, UK REACH for CEFIC? For us, Say it's very clear, we would like to have continued let's say, participation of the UK fully in REACH uh, and in ECHA, of course, and as, as a consequence. Um, because that will ensure that we remain fully aligned. What are your recommendations for industry on how to prepare for Brexit? Because of this uncertainty, uh, we have to take somewhat of a, of a straddled approach. On the one hand, we have to say we want the UK to remain in reach, uh, fully aligned with the, with the EU. But on the other hand, we have to advise our companies to prepare for a, a no-deal no deal Brexit. And you would like to add something maybe on recommendations for industry in preparing to Brexit? The first thing is to um, prepare for the worst case scenario, exit day in, in March 2019. Secondly, I would say map out what your current roles are underneath EU reach your company, what role does it have now? What role will it have after exit day for EU reach? And the third question is, okay, what role will your company have for UK reach if there is one? And are you ready for UK reach? Thank you both for sketching various possible scenarios and actions. I wish everyone involved all the best. Wishing up on a star means that you hope your dreams come true. The Brexit voters were wishing for less. They can dream on at least until the end of March. But I'm afraid in this case less is more. Yet I hope for industry that less is less and not more. <laughs>